When it comes to applying your skill points in Seven Days to Die, I normally tell people to go down the tree of the melee weapon they like the best. So if you're a fan of spears, perception would be a great starting tree. If you liked using clubs or sledges, then strength would be the way to go. For fist weapons or brawling, then you'd want to go fortitude. Agility would be all about the knives. And then intellect would be for batons. Now, although this is a very good starting point to get a little bit more effectiveness out of your weapon of choice, there are some really key skills throughout in every tree that are just absolutely amazing for every build. So starting things off on the intellect tree, uh, even if you are not a fan of going batons and you're not as concerned with robotics, there are still some absolutely incredible things in this tree. First off, the Daring Adventurer. The Daring Adventurer is going to give you better rewards. And additionally, when you get it capped, it's going to give you double rewards from quests. Now, this is not only going to give you double rewards from trader quests. It is also going to give you double rewards for any of your challenge rewards that you unlocked that do require going to the trader to pick up. In addition to that, if you go into Physician, just uh, one point into Physician, and you see at the bottom of it there, Splints and Casts, Cure Sprains Instantly. This is a huge quality of life thing. Um, you know, it's got other benefits, of course. 25% uh, more effectiveness of healing, more XP from using any sorts of first aid. However, being able to cure sprains instantly is just an absolutely amazing aspect. In addition to that, if you're playing with friends, Charismatic Nature is incredible. Charismatic Nature is a buff that will buff your teammate, but not you. So ideally, if you're playing with a friend, both of you go into this and then you cross buff each other. This does have a... Crazy, crazy range across the map, so if you're not in the same area, you'll still be getting the buff. And if you look through the various points, um, they start with various bonuses. Starting off with allies and party members regenerate lost health faster. Uh, allies and party members gain 20% more block and melee damage. 10% less damage from all sources, and it takes half damage from bleeding, and you stop bleeding twice as fast. Captain, straight up 10% better loot, and then when you get it fully maxed out, allies and party members find 20% better loot and gain plus one to all attributes. These are absolutely huge throughout, and it allows you to get a little deeper in your trees once you get this maxed out without having to max out the uh, particular attribute for that individual tree. In addition, on the physician tree, although you do get that splints and cast cure sprains instantly, if you decide you wanna use stun batons, it's gonna benefit you to go down this tree. If you look at the fourth aspect, gain an additional 20% chance to dismember enemies with batons. And if you go down one more, each blow landed has a 10% chance to be an instant kill. So if you're going to go stun batons, you definitely want to go down to physician as well. Now, taking a look in the agility tree, parkour is without a doubt one of the best things in the entire game. One thing you will notice is you're going to be jumping and you're going to be falling. So parkour allows you to jump higher and fall further. So good stuff all the way throughout. Uh, even just get one, getting one point in there reduces the stamina cost of jumping and increases your safe fall distance. So every point is definitely noticeable in parkour. In the fortitude tree, this is one that I just always go into. And I like to at least get one point here. The big deal with healing factor is it gives you natural health regen. So you see here, we're going to gain one health every 35 seconds. Um, has other benefits as well, but without doing anything, if you're at, say, half health and you're just hiding in your base, you're going to naturally regen without eating or using any first aid. In addition to that, particularly early game, you are going to be running a long, long way. So cardio 
increases your stamina regeneration while you're sprinting. You're going to be sprinting an awful lot, like I said, particularly early before you get vehicles, and cardio is just an absolutely amazing choice. If you want to start building your base right away, you can't go wrong with either of the construction perks. I personally feel like Miner 69er is more important than Motherload, but they do work together and are incredibly powerful. So if you're going to, if one of the draws for you for seven days to die is base building, Miner 69er and Motherload could be for you. Uh, you see, they're going to increase your block damage done and reduce the stamina cost, which means you're going to be able to mine trees and stones, etc., faster and longer. Mother load, of course, is going to be focused on the quantity of items you get from doing those various traits. Now, with that in mind, when I very first start, you instantly start off with four points, like after being two minutes into the game. I personally am a big fan of spears. So, like I said, just to smooth the combat experience, I normally suggest people go into spears first. So, what I generally will do with those first four points is go two points into perception and then that's going to unlock me to be able to put two points into spears this is going to give me a little bit increased damage it's going to give me a greater chance of finding spears and spear books and it's going to reduce the stamina cost of my attacks i personally like i said i'm a fan of spears so this is what i'll do Normally, in my next few points, I will usually always come over and put at least one point into healing factor and one point into cardio, as I'm just a strong believer of those two traits, and then additionally one point into parkour. Now, I love following the trader pro quest progression system and using that as my base to advance through the game. So with that in mind, it is an absolute no-brainer to start working on Daring Adventurer. Now, you are going to, to get Daring Adventurer full unlocked for the double quest rewards. Your intellect has to be level 10, which does take a quite a few points to get down and unlock. Now, a benefit here, besides just using Charismatic Nature and having it maxed out, uh, that one you need to be level 10 as well, you can use mods. And they're relatively common mods that you'll find throughout. You can stack one plus one strength with any other stat mod in the game. Since I like to go down into that intellect tree for the trader rewards, I will usually go intellect and the cigar. So I'm getting plus one strength and plus one intellect just from those mods. So we go back and take a look at the tree now. Uh, even though I didn't put any points to, to the attribute, we are now a level two strength. Additionally, we are level two intellect. So just a few helpful hints to get started. Um, I personally would say you just do really good in the intellect tree. I am not a huge fan of the stun batons, but I know a lot of people are. It's just absolutely incredible crowd control. If you are a fan of stun batons, it makes absolute perfect sense to go full into electrocutioner. Get your daring adventurer going if you're playing with a friend going with charismatic nature and then starting to work with physician since i like to use spears i do spread mine out a little bit um, normally after i get past the point where i'm at now i will usually try to focus getting this tree upgraded a little bit more now as i get the spears leveled up of course we do get lots of value out of it but once you get it to a point where you have three points into spears you then have to get to seven and additionally it is taking two points to unlock each perception tier so once i get to three of five i personally will usually call it good for a moment there i do want to get this maxed out but i will generally back off of the priority of that a little bit and start working on the intellect tree that way i can work on daring adventurer Hopefully this helps you all with your journey in setting up your skill points in seven days to die. Um, remember, you can respec. Uh, it's going to take a elixir that's pretty widely available directly from the trader later in game. By drinking one of these, you can respec. So, uh, for example, as you see, like right now, I'm using shotguns, machine guns, and my spear as my main weapons. Uh, so with that in mind, I would want to go into 
spears, of course, in the perception tree. I would want to go into boomstick in the strength tree. And I'd want to go into machine gunner in the you know, fortitude tree. But say, for example, I wanted to start playing around with, say, the sniper rifle or any other weapon in the game. Then I can easily just buy a grandpa's forgetting elixir from the vendor and respecking later. This will completely wipe all of your skill points and start you fresh again where you can just auto apply everything back in. So thanks an absolute ton for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.